If Disneyland still required tickets to get on attractions, would Jungle Cruise still be an e-ticket? What ticket would Rise of the Resistance be? Walt Disney said that Disneyland would never be completed as long as there was still imagination left in the world. So Disneyland has changed substantially since the days of coupon books. Watch two former Disneyland cast members and first-generation annual pass holders rank each attraction's ticket status according to the context of today's Disneyland. Okay, so we're going to start start off with Galaxy's Edge, newest land at Disneyland. What coupon level would you give Rise of the Resistance? I think that's an E for me and practically everybody. Pretty yeah. easy. It's pretty epic. I feel like because it has so many different phases in the attraction, it's doing something that other attractions haven't done. I mean, Haunted Mansion has had different phases. Like, you know, you have the expanding room and the hallway and mm -hmm. then getting on the Doom buggy. So it's not as though we have never had an attra a Disneyland attraction attraction that has different phases but they've definitely taken it to a new level so i agree e coupon as well that's a slam dunk okay so yeah, that's 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 easy <laughs> yeah disneyland tickets came in a b c d and e each level ticket was increasingly more impressive from a ticket attractions being the simplest attractions to e ticket attractions being the most impressive most popular and most cutting edge times have changed and so have the attractions so where would they rank now? Let's see. Okay, so let's take a look at the other Galaxy's Edge attraction, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. I think there's it, it has some good things going for it in that for a Star Wars person, getting to step on board is a huge deal. Getting to even mm -hmm. see the Millennium Falcon and walk into it, and it's beautifully rendered. It's huge. You have a truly interactive attraction. There have been attractions with some interactivity, but this is, I mean, this is really is it's it's fun it's fascinating it involves you know it, there's 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 a lot going on there i don't know that it should get knocked down from an e just because it's right next to rise of the resistance which is <laughs> so much better but you're right but then does that automatically make it a d in the pre-show there's an there's animatronics right animatronics right. are a priority and they definitely have a sophisticated right. animatronic in in that attraction it's new when something is older, does it start to drop? I feel like there's some attractions that historically probably should have dropped at a certain point in time that didn't necessarily do that, but it probably makes sense that it it should have. So you're making me think about uh, Smuggler's Run in a different way because, you know, I'm I'm very biased about screen rides. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's a screen ride, so I automatically, in my mind, I'm like rating it low. But when you... Um, are talking about the fact that it's interactive. Yeah, we haven't had an interactive screen ride before. The closest thing I can think of would be Horizons, where you get to choose your own ending. And of course, this is a whole different level than that. I'm not trying to compare the two. Well, if you just talk about something with a screen about that size and the fact that you're moving around, it's not something that's unheard of at a county fair or a shopping mall or something like yeah. that. And also, any attraction where you spend most of your time looking at a screen is going to get some points off for me and yeah. and because that's that's really most of what's going on here and also i think the amount of physical space you move through because to me a dark ride is actually what's exciting about it is that you're visiting an actual world and it's how your body is physically moved through that world now the way they move you through on this is excellent yeah i mean it's got it's got excellent movement that's unlike other things they do but you're not really going anywhere it's not like you visit a bunch of places you're sort of in place and it's a big screen kind of like a home theater you know, it has elements of a home theater. So I think that knocks it down. And I agree. I think screens are something we spend all of our lives doing now. It's almost less special than it used to be in the parks because your nose is buried in a screen several hours a day, the size of your phone. So screens are... That's a really uh, interesting point. Screens aren't special. Like when Star Tours first came out, our, our nose was not in a screen all day long like it is now. Yeah. So that's a really interesting point. It is less novel. Okay, so what was your conclusion? What's what's the coupon level? Uh, I'm going to give it a D. D. Okay. I you know, I think you've talked me into that as well. I was thinking lower a C, but I agree with some of the points that you made. Did you know that Disneyland did not have e-tickets from the start? While Disneyland opened on July 17th, 1955, ticket books were not part of the Disneyland experience until October 1955. The first generation Disneyland ticket 
books only contain A, B, and C tickets. Then the D ticket was added in 1956. And then the coveted E ticket was finally added in 1959. Which of today's attractions would be E tickets? Let's find out. Okay, let's move on to New Orleans Square, mm -hmm. the Haunted Mansion. Haunted Mansion is an E. Yeah, it's a masterpiece. There's really nothing to say, right? No, there's nothing to say. It's a masterpiece. It's synonymous with a Disney visit for so many people. Other parks have also tried to imitate it and have never even come remotely close, although they've done some wonderful things. Yeah. I love ghost trains. I love knockoffs of a haunted mansion in their own right, but it's the it's the king of all haunted houses. It just is. And it has original music that still um, stands the test of time. So I totally agree in E. Okay, New Orleans Square, the other big attraction is Pirates of the Caribbean, what coupon level would you give it in this day and age? In this day and age, I mean, I have a hard time not giving it an E. There's so much depth to the story and how the story is told. You have input from some of the greatest animators ever and some of the greatest ride directors ever. The art direction is flawless. It's a complete experience. We've talked about how it's a, such an unassuming facade and you walk inside and there's the pure magic of, you know, almost like Harry Potter, where it looks like a building that's this size and it's actually 20 times that size you know it's you know, all of a sudden you have this whole adventure in there you never would have expected so yeah. that's fantastic um it's yeah. part of american folklore the americana always scores points to me with disney and even though it's even though it's not set in the americas it's it's united states tradition with children say from when disneyland opened to be fascinated by seafaring adventures and pirates are one of those things so and it's, it's there's so much history right there is a ton of history and it's been kept relevant all the Johnny Depp movies that's kept it more relevant not that I really like Johnny Depp in it I really kind of prefer like the traditional Pirates of the Caribbean but I have to admit like for a younger audience it's still relevant those movies are still going strong and there was kind of a little bit of a phase with Pirates yeah so e-ticket definitely E-Ticket was added in 1959 as a result of Disneyland's first major expansion, which included the opening of the Matterhorn bobsleds, the monorail, and the submarine voyage, all E-Ticket attractions. The new ticket level required that other attractions, such as the Jungle Cruise, be promoted from the former top-tier D-Ticket level to the new E-Ticket. Would these attractions still be considered E-Tickets? Stay tuned. Uh, okay, let's move on to Tomorrowland. So Astro Orbiter is is the reincarnation of rocket jets but taken from the top level and moved down to the bottom level and put into the front of Tomorrowland. Um, the reason I say that is that Astro Orbiter didn't actually have a coupon level, but Rocket Jets did. So the level of coupon for Rocket Jets actually really surprised me. It was a D attraction. So mm -hmm. what do you think of Astro Orbiter's level? What coupon level should it have in this day and age? I think as, um, first of all, it's a round ride. It's a spinner attraction. I've seen ones at county fairs that are actually more worth of a smile than that. They also lifted the design from Disneyland Paris, right? It was kind of carried back. We all know the problems with the location. We That's not the really location. the yeah. We're not getting into politics or any of those kinds of yeah. things. So, so I, I just have a hard time giving it more than an A. Oh, interesting. I'd, okay. put it, I'd, I'd have to put it in, in, in the A category because I think it had more going for it when it was high up in the air and at least had a view and right. now it does not it doesn't have any sort of story to it it doesn't have any sort of adventure to it i guess the fact that you can push the the lever to go up and down is something um <laughs> but i think dumbo rates higher than that but as far as astro orbiter if it's going to be a b what's worse than it yeah you know i in my mind i was kind of thinking a b but after hearing you talk, if that's a B, then what attraction is an A? I have to put it at the bottom level. So I totally agree. It, it's I don't I don't hate it at all, but I just don't think there's anything to bump it up as far as all the traditional Disney criteria or or, or anything about the experience at all. So so and something's gotta be an A that's halfway decent. So it's right. it's it's pleasant to ride on, but I gotta I'm giving it an A. Right. And I think that that's a good point is that you know, A attractions don't have to be bad attractions. They might just be very yeah. very simple there's no bad attractions at Disneyland. right there's nothing for it that you would need to have an upcharge for absolutely okay how about atopia now atopia originally had c coupon but what do you think in this day and age what would you give it? Hmm, good question. I always give points when you have a different method of moving around and the way it is physically from your body is different. There's nothing that has the same feel as Autopia like that. When there have been 
off and on show elements in Autopia. They've been really modest, not especially ambitious. You could take them or leave them because mostly it's about there's concrete and there's go-kart sounds. The history is fantastic. The, the car designs themselves, we know, are, are, are gorgeous. And that I'm glad it's still there. If there's something, if there's something else they could put there, then they certainly can. Yeah. Um, but I think I'm going to have to put that one in the B category. That's exactly what I was thinking was a B because it, mm -hmm. you know, I think about the original concept that Disneyland is supposed to be in a place where you can have fun with your kids. And certainly kids would have fun on Utopia. I certainly understand that little kids would be excited to be able to drive a car, but there's really nothing for an adult. There's, it's not offering you a lot. If you're an adult with a kid, then you have the, the fun of watching your kid be excited about it. But if you're just an adult going on it by yourself, there's not much to it. It's not like a super short attraction. It's act an actual vehicle. So I would hesitate to give it an A. So I, I agree, B. Yeah, I, I, I actually, now that you mention it, the, the children that are smaller like that, I'm not so sure how much they can even see over the top of the, the dashboard. Yeah. So that so that I, I have to kind of ding it for that a little bit too. And there's no music. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things that aren't, aren't right. really there. So, but yeah, it's, it's not whether I love it being there or whether it's an important part of Disneyland history. It's just the experience of riding the ride in itself is all I'm talking about. The term e-ticket ride entered into the American lexicon to mean the ultimate quality experience. American astronaut Sally Ride described her first excursion into outer space as a real e-ticket ride. How about Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters? That's an attraction that never had a coupon because it was well after 1982. You have some fairly solid character references going on there. There's a soundtrack to it. There's a fair bit visually going on with it. I almost want to knock it down to a B to encourage people to ride it repeatedly and work on their score. Because if, <laughs> if you know, if, if uh -huh. I'm making it a little more affordable, then people can do it twice. And I think they would get something from that. Yeah, it is interactive, which is generally a good thing. But I feel that it's very two dimensional. There definitely are show, ele show elements. I think I would probably put it at a C because there really are consistent show elements. They're just not high quality show elements. I, I keep thinking of Men in Black at Universal. I feel yeah. like went a, a, a little bit more in a realistic direction and a little less like it's a, a, an exhibit. You know, a, a C would be feasible. Yeah, somewhere B to C. What do you think about the monorail now? The monorail used to be an e-ticket attraction. Right. But what about um, now? It sort of serves as transportation. Right. So it's, it's a, I, I hate to charge too much. I tend to like that to be free just for the sake of going somewhere, you know, just, just as a, as, as an attraction element, not to say it's not a wonderful thing. It's just to say that you, sh it should be available for free so you can use it in that way. So I'll say free. Yeah. I think that's a good point. And I feel while a monorail is still a very fun form of transportation, it doesn't have the novelty that it had many, many years ago, just because, you know, time is, has passed. But I, I think that's a good point. Okay, Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage. Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage, that version of it never had a coupon, but its original version, Submarine Voyage, which is an attraction that I worked for many, many years, that was an e-coupon. What do you think about it today? I'm going to knock it down to a D because of the primary focus on screens. Yeah. Screen animation, it upstages the fact that you're actually in the water, and the water is almost unnecessary now because they could accomplish the same thing with screens since they're fo you're focusing on flat animation. So it almost kind of was like, why do you bother with this gigantic tank if you're going to do that? That's not making the best use of the space as far as right. that goes. Although there are, of course, there are scenes, now I haven't been on it in a while, but there are those scenes where they have the jellyfish and things like that, which are better than ever, right? Those are those are fantastic. Yeah. And I, I think adding the Nemo element was, a, was, a, was an intelligent element, yeah. for sure. I think it was liquid space and inner space and all these themes on space that Tomorrowland was doing as exploring the farther reaches of what humankind can do. It's a great focus for Tomorrowland, but this doesn't increase the focus of Tomorrowland. At yeah. all. So, so in that in that way, it's not a story that, I don't know, I feel like you're, you're you don't feel like you're traveling somewhere like you've got somewhere. You're yeah. just kind of going around. And so, I feel that the, the fact that there are so many screens in it, I agree with you, it bumps it from an E to a D. 
It's still a very novel ride vehicle system. People do not have many opportunities to go on a submarine even today. So that's still, that makes me not want to make it go any lower than a D. A problem that I have with the current version is that when you're out in the lagoon, before you go into the caverns, there are no fish. There used to be fish. There used to be things to look at. And now it's like right. you just see plants and water. And that's basically, I mean, it's that's not a hundred percent true, but that's largely true. So I feel like it's right. less of an attraction that it used to be. So yeah, I, I agree. I would say a D. The experience of being in a submarine means it's a minimum of a D. Yeah. It's at least a D, just not quite an E at this point. So. Yeah, I, I, we're, we're in consensus here. I totally agree with that. Not every attraction required a ticket. Some were designated as free attractions. For example, Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln and Circle Vision were both free. Which attractions would be designated as free in today's Disneyland? Stay tuned. Okay, Space Mountain. Uh, it's an E. Yeah, I still think it's an E. I do okay, too. what about Star Tours? The adventure continues. So when it first came out, it never had a coupon because it was well after 1982. So it's never actually had a coupon. But if you were to rate it today in today's version, what do you think? I think today's version does such a good job of feeling like you had an adventure and an experience with those characters. I'm going to give it an E. I think people, you can hear the reactions people have to it. It always gets a laugh when the spy shows up on the screen. I think the direction and the art direction is so brilliant and there's animatronics in it and there's the score is used beautifully experience people even though it's a screen ride i gotta give it an e i think it's a, i think it's a hit yeah you know what i really like about it is the fact that there are several different versions of it so every time you go on it it's a little bit different you know even though sure. it's been around for a while of course they do do some updates from time to time um, like the last time i went on it was just uh, about a month ago and i saw a version that i had never seen before still to this day so so I think I agree with you. Uh, I <laughs> it kind of pains me to give a screenwriter. Yeah, I know it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Well, with on the condition that they keep updating it. If they, yeah. If, if they're going to commit to keep updating it with new movies and new con new content, then I think we can, they can get away with that. Yeah. So yeah, if it was still the old version, it would definitely be lower. But the the new version is really good. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to Toontown. So sure. Toontown, start off with uh, Chippendale's Gadget Go Coaster. Just off straight off the cuff, let's sit that in the C category. Yeah, I was actually thinking that, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I, I know that we have talked endlessly about Disneyland and that we, you know, we're on the same page about so many things, but I'm surprised at how many of these that, because we haven't, we didn't discuss this ahead of time. Right. I'm surprised at how many of them I, I agree with you on. Yeah, I, it's, a, it's a C to me. It's definitely fun because it is a little roller coaster. So because of the fun factor, I would give it a C as opposed to lower. But it's extremely short and there's just like nothing to it. It draws a lot of attention and people are more likely to consider it because it's a little bit of a showpiece, but also it's kind of neat for kids. It's maybe their first roller coaster. You, you don't want them to feel like, oh, it was your first roller coaster. It's an A ride. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a, for, it gives it a little status. Yeah. So so I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay. What about um, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway? And of course, this is a brand new attraction at Disneyland. So it's never had a coupon. What do you think? I think it's super charming and popular. It has all the elements, even though it's flat. It's It, it's, it happens to be a subject matter that looks good flat. Also, you know, you can't shortchange Mickey. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Mickey's Mickey's gets a gets a little bit of a uh, of a of a free pass to have something like that. There's some funny and witty things in it. There is technically, you know, some animatronics going on in there. There's some newer technology there. Um, I can I can give it an E. I'm okay with that. I think it's really cute. Yeah, I think it's an E attraction. That's something that I think would be reevaluated in you know like 10 years time but mm -hmm. for right now it is very popular and i love how it it makes me feel like toontown is part of disneyland now like it has a real reason for being there because it now has multiple attractions and multiple like viable good attractions because i i think roger rabbit's cartoon spin is a good attraction so yeah i, I agree moving on to roger rabbit's cartoon spin what what level would you give that i think it's a d minimum i want 
want it to consider it for an E, but there's quite a bit in there that isn't trying hard enough to be an E. It's uh, a, a little bit predictable because it recycled almost all of its gags from existing other attractions, like with the exception of that absolutely spectacular portable hole shot. Yeah, I love that. Um, there's some very funny and wonderful bits of the character. The, the Q was an E-ticket Q, especially when it came out. Yeah, the Q is spectacular. Awesome. But... It's also a little bit static by today's standards and it hasn't been maintained that well. So it's the sculpting of it and the art direction is is beautiful. Just like I mean, back to Autopia again, the cards, the 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 the, the, art, the artistry on some things like these, some of these ride vehicles and stuff like that is great. But that does not that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about like if I was a guest and how would I feel going on this? I will say that some of the dark rides in Disneyland have gotten some beautiful projection mapping upgrades, which we'll get to. Yeah. If Roger Rabbit got the same treatment, I would give it an E. Oh, if they wow. showed If they showed it a little love with some newer projection technology, and it's a perfectly good ride to add that to, then I would give it that. But until they do something with it, it's going to have to sit in D. It's, it's looking a little dark and shabby. Yeah. I think I would give it a C. However, I don't disagree with a D. Like, if I saw it as a D, I wouldn't go, you know, that doesn't make any sense. I, I do think that makes sense. A lot of the dark rides, when they had coupons, were C's and B's. I don't think any of them were D's, but that doesn't mean that they can't be now or they shouldn't be now. Sure. I do. So I think we're we're really close on this one, but this is one where we just slightly disagree. So let's move on to, I'm going to clump a bunch of attractions together because I don't think they're worth talking about individually, but everything else in Toontown. So you've got Donald Duck's Pond, you've got Goofy's How to Play Yard, you've got like Minnie's House and things like that. Chances are we would put them in the same level as each other. Where do you think they should be? I kind of like the idea of any character meet and greet, like going in Mickey's house being free yeah so i'm not so sure i'd want to charge a ticket for that because i just don't i don't like the precedent it sets for little kids like certain people you have to pay for their time you know especially because those <laughs> characters supposedly love you they're not there to charge you for the you know it's just i don't like the feel of that everything else i think maybe just a across the board i'm not sure if anything warrants a b in there i lean towards free because there's not much to any of those things yeah technically there are attractions but it's almost borderline on just atmosphere yeah I haven't been through the new ones. So there was sort of a, not a ball pit, but like a treehouse ride that they have. You know, I'm not, I don't even know. Obviously, I, I can't really get an opinion because I literally yeah. haven't been on them. So that would be kind of silly. Yeah. So um, let's just move on. Free is good. That works. The era of Disneyland ticket books spanned from October 1955 until May 1982. In June of 1982, ticket books were replaced by passports that provided guests with both admission to the park and unlimited use of attractions. No longer was it necessary to make hard decisions about which rides to go on. You could go on them all. Indiana Jones Adventure, what would you give that? Well, it's probably an E based on the scale and based on the fact that it really is exciting. There's some yeah. things I'd love to see improved on it, but I think from the guest's point of view, yeah, just the average person's point of view, you'd have to put it in the E category. I think it makes it. I agree. I think it's just too... Uh, the scale of it is just too epic. There are very few tractions that have that scale, and that alone makes it really exciting. Mm -hmm. I love the whole 1930s feel, and I love how it fits into Adventureland. Of course, they've made some changes to make it fit into Adventureland better um, than it would have in the old Adventureland. But yeah, I, I agree. I would say that it's it's an E for sure. What about Jungle Cruise? Jungle Cruise has been around since the very beginning. It's always been an e-coupon as long as they had coupons, but is it still an e-coupon? I can't give it an e. I can give it a D though. It's such a, it, again, it's it's unique to the other experiences in the park. It seems harsh to give it a C. Well, I don't know. Some parks don't have it, right? Uh, that's true. At least one of the Asian parks do not have it, if not multiple Asian parks. I'm pretty sure Hong Kong has it because I remember people talking about there's a skipper who, you know, speaks different languages like Cantonese or Mandarin or English. Yeah, it's not in every every park and it's not in Disneyland Paris for sure. I, I, I'd be really surprised if people were feeling sad when they go to the park that there's no Jungle Cruise, that it just never crosses their mind if it's not there. It just happens to be there. But on the other hand, I'd like for Disneyland to have a bit of a feel of the Disneyland that was created and you know, because the more it evolves, there's certain there's certain 
hornier elements of Disneyland that start to disappear. And it seems like people feel like they've had a Disneyland day when there's certain things that are a little, a little like that. Yeah. Um, but that's all, again, it's not a discussion of the importance of that. It's, it's, did you feel like you got a D ticket experience for what you just went on just, just on its own merits? It's pushing it. It's closer to a C. Um, <laughs> I find this really interesting because I was thinking more on the level of E and it's interesting that it's even difficult for you to to give it a d the scale of it is so enormous to me that it makes, great. it makes it kind of hard for me to to give it a lower ranking but i think you made some valid points for sure i hmm I'm torn whether I think it's an E or a D, but I definitely, in my opinion, I don't think it's a C for sure. Um, I can I can roll with a D. I'm just I'm I'm trying yeah. to find out what there what there is about it that's um. And it's not about whether I like it or not. We've already gone over that. It's yeah. just it's just whether that's whether that's the inherent value of the attraction. Well, it sounds like it, it's a, it can pull me up to a D. Well, it sounds like you know you average our scores and and it's a D when you yeah think of it that way. Okay, Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, and what I found interesting when I was preparing for this video is that they still call it Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. I don't remember any other attractions where they still say that, but they do for Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. That had a coupon of E. E. Really? We could keep it in the E zone. It so sums up the feeling of Disney and it's lengthy, right? It's, it's, yeah. um, now, uh, you do sit, right? You do sit. Yeah. There's no screens in it at all. Right. <laughs> you know, there's per, per square inch, there's possibly more animatronics than anything else in the park at this point. Okay. Right? So it's something that people always talk about. It's got a classic song that goes with it. There's not a whole lot like that anymore. And it's definitely just a part of people's memories of the park. But as far as being a ride through i mean you i could see you're not getting i'm not getting an e-vibe off of you but i'm trying to think what, what no. it, it's i can live in in the lower ranking for it i don't think i'd ever want to see it go away yeah oh i don't want it to go away either i love the attraction i love the nostalgia factor i love the audio animatronics it was the first attraction with audio animatronics so it has a huge history. I was actually thinking B. So B, I'm just really? laughing that we have such a disparity. <laughs> so I don't even think we try to come to consensus. We just, uh, it is no. what it is. We have two different interpretations. Yeah. And the reason why I think it's a B is that when you compare it to other audio animatronic shows, and I granted, we don't really have audio animatronic shows anymore, but like ones of the past, like, Country Bear Jamboree or America Sings or American Adventure in Epcot Center. You know, you compare it to other audio animatronic attractions, it's really, really basic. It's charming, but it's really, really basic. So that really brings it down for me. But again, like sure. we've said all along, that doesn't mean that I don't love it. I think it should be in Disneyland. It, well, <laughs> this is interesting. The, I think it does depend on the overall mix, though, because let's say we we haven't done rankings on Fantasyland Dark Rides yet. No, not yet. If you were to give something like Pinocchio a C and then the Tiki Room a B, is that really fair? So that's because I think I think the Tiki Room's got a lot more going on in some ways than some of those attractions although they you do ride through them and that's worth a lot it, it depends where tiki room to me sits in the overall disneyland experience and i think that i could be swayed based on that as well interesting no okay. i think we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna diverge on tiki room. yeah, <laughs> and yeah. just like we did on uh, jungle cruise right yeah <laughs> and so so far it's adventureland yeah. where we don't see eye to eye on the rankings right, even though we right. both love all of those attractions Fun fact, back in the coupon days prior to 1982, if you ran out of e-tickets and wanted to go on another e-ticket attraction, no worries. There were kiosks located throughout the park where you could purchase additional single tickets. Of course, you could buy any level ticket, but let's get real. If you were going to spend extra money, it was going to be for an e-ticket attraction. Alice in Wonderland. Back when it had a coupon before 1982, it was a B attraction. Now that was based on the old version of Alice in Wonderland before it got renovated and reimagined. So that was the old Alice in Wonderland that had like an upside down room and was very, very different. So the current Alice in Wonderland, what coupon level would you give it? It's almost at the Roger Rabbit level. Yeah. 
So what was I putting that in as a D? Right. God, I don't know. I feel like it's somewhere between C and D for me. It's really, really good. I mean, no question. I mean, and, and a lot of personal experiences that make it a favorite, but yeah. I mean, it's, that's for us. But, but uh, the, the, the physical movement through the ride is actually, it is a little bit different. It's not exactly the same as other things. So that's, that's very positive. It does a really good job of taking you on the movie adventure without just being a by the numbers. Now we have this scene. Now we have that scene. Even yeah. though it is doing that, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like a number of kind of surprising experiences. Color is fantastic. The music's great. I feel um, that not, not all that long ago, but a handful of years ago, they added the projections within the attraction. They've done that with multiple dark rides in Fantasyland, but I feel like Alice in Wonderland is where they did the best job so now mm. that they've added that i feel like it's pretty exciting i would give it a d now prior to that update i probably would have given it a c back then it's got a special status among all the fantasy land dark rides it's it's particularly good i can roll with a d on that what do you think about casey jr circus train so back in the day it had a b ticket that's it's still a b yeah i i agree there's kind of a lot to see on casey jr so yeah i don't think it necessarily gets a lot of credit because it's sharing storybook land give offer you a lot to see what about dumbo the flying elephant so back in the day it was a c coupon what would you give it now well i think from when they opened it to now they've improved the way it looks they've improved the experience of course the one in florida is particularly an improved experience but we're not talking about that yeah um it's special to people i think it definitely des deserves better than an a because it's got too much history behind it it's such a novel looking thing it's very charming does it deter people from waiting in line when you make it a higher coupon <laughs> because it's a long way <laughs> yeah, it does have a long way. <laughs> I think for um, me, I would give it a B because yeah. it is very charming. People love it. But at the end of the day, it's just a round ride. And when it was given, uh, it was given a C coupon back in the day, but that was when we had a whole lot less technology and it was more difficult to give really rich, big, epic experiences. So I feel like it's, that's an attraction that should, this its status should be lowered a little bit. I agree. I, I think it deserves better than an A. So I think B is, is good. Okay. Yeah. That's not to say we don't love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a small world. It's a small world. Oh, I, I already feel, I, I can already feel that we're not going to agree on this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small world. Back in the day was an E coupon. What would you give it now? Uh, I don't think it's an E, but again, this is not a discussion of what are the critical attractions we would yeah. have cut. That's a separate, separate experience. So if it's not um, an E, what, what would it be? It's possibly a C. And I like keeping it affordable for everyone. It's one of my most important attractions in the park. But the question is, what's the experience like? It's essentially static plus animation. Yeah. And, you know, a, a fantastic experience. Well, you know, this is interesting. Do you get a higher ranking if it's more exciting? Because you think of something like the, the Avatar, not the Flight of Passage, but the um, the, the Navi River. It's, there, there's, yeah. there's, it's very new age, mellow and chill out. But does that mean you downgrade it? I think it's a small world as a very mellow attraction. It's very immersive and you definitely get into the world of it. Uh huh. So when you say those words, where you take me is to the Blue Bayou scene in Pirates of the Caribbean. That's very chill. It's very relaxing. It's not exciting, but it's the high, it's super high quality. I think an excitement can bring it up, but if there's not excitement, but it's got everything else going for it, it still could be high. I have another point on here, which is that many attractions you can see elements of the show building that are supposed to be invisible. Uh huh. I don't think that's automatically a bad thing, but there is a bit of a difference between we're looking at sets in a building versus we feel like we're really there. And sometimes it's just, you know, lighting that doesn't take that into account. The question is, is the experience such that you're not looking at those things? And I know that in it's a small world. I can see very clearly in my mind what the ceiling tiles look like because I find myself looking at them. It's not really a, an endorsement of it's a small world. You know, you, should, you shouldn't really be thinking about like, oh, I could see the edge of the flume. I could see the edge of the set. Oh, look at this lighting instrument if i'm looking at that stuff it's a c yeah <laughs> <laughs> right uh, I think you've talked me into a C. In my mind, I was going to say D. I feel like it's definitely not an E anymore, but I do feel that the scale of it is actually pretty big and it's a fairly lengthy attraction. And I really have a soft spot for boat rides. 
And I love yes. the idea of an indoor boat ride. So that makes me bump it up. But some of the things you said, I, I, I certainly can't argue with. When people, including me, discuss the old system for entering Disneyland attractions, they usually say tickets. However, technically the word used inside Disneyland was coupon. If you want to be exact, an e-ticket was actually an e-coupon. Okay, King Arthur's Carousel. That used to be an A. Is it still an A? Or something else. Yeah, it's an A. It's special. I like it, but it's an A. Yeah, I agree. Mad Tea Party. Mad Tea Party used to be a C. What should it be nowadays? I gotta give it an A. Oh, really? I hmm. gotta give it an A, and I'm because they put governors on it, and you can't spin them fast anymore. You can break your arm, and it's not going to spin fast. So I think they kind of killed a lot of what was exciting about it. I mean, if they had to, they had to, but I think it was it's a little extreme how little you can spin it, yeah. which takes a lot, which really takes all the interesting because if you want to spin it too fast, that's on you. Right. Um, but they said no, no, we're not doing that. So that doesn't leave a whole. It, it isn't fun anymore to me. Yeah, I think it looks really good, and I like it in the land. It's Right. But I I, just, I can't justify giving a round ride more than an A unless it's something really, really special. And it's good, but I can't say that it's really, really special. So I, I agree. I agree with the A. Okay, Matterhorn bobsleds. Yeah, Matterhorn bobsled. It used I, to be. I, an, I can't put an e. I, I can't give it an E. I can't put it on par with something like Haunted Mansion or. Um, or Indiana Jones. It's clearly it's fun. It's cute. Yeah. It's a much it's a much faster Casey Jr. Right. <laughs> I mean it's 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 a it's um it, just because it's a, just because it's a roller coaster or a thrill ride doesn't give it an automatic high rating. As as nice as that is, I think the upgrades are great. New um, Yeti figures are are super fun. I it's, I love it. But. Not a, it's not an E to me. Yeah, and if you compare it to the other roller coasters, like I feel like this is not the same level as Big Thunder. This is not the same level as Space Mountain. It's uh, to me, it's definitely a step down. You know, it's so I would give it a D. Uh, it would, it, yeah. Anything that's a thrill ride probably automatically gets a bump up. So it yeah. could be in the D. I could have almost given it a C to be honest, but yeah. we'll keep it in D. People will feel satisfied with that. Yeah. Okay, what about Mr. Toad's Wild Ride? Yeah, I really like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride a lot. It used to be a C. I just, I think it's still in the C zone. Yeah, I agree. I love it. If Alice I'm is a D, it. then it's got to be, it's got to be below Alice. So yeah. and Alice is a D, so it's a C. Ironically, it used to be a C and Alice used to be a B. So we've actually changed the ranking. We're both on the same page on this. I, I agree with that. Okay, what about Peter Pan's Flight? Peter Pan's <laughs> Flight used to be a C. <laughs> picked it up somewhere doesn't matter it was such an ingenious thing for a dark ride and to put that in there and and it's it's there's so much magic in it straight wow. up magic and that and, and people cl clearly love it have a hard time giving it an e though yeah um, it just doesn't measure i mean you think about it rise of the resistance haunted mansion and peter pan's flight all on the same level that doesn't make any sense to me on the other hand, just because it's simplest, a little more simplistic visually, and just because it's a little shorter and it's not as ambitious of a scale, do people love it? I mean, is it a great experience? Do. It doesn't have its big boy pants on like <laughs> Indiana Jones does. Yeah. But it's also hard to find anything to knock down about it, and it's just so it's just such a must do for everybody. I I, I, I could almost give it an E, but it's definitely no less than a D. Yeah, I, I think that it's a D. Even though I think I prefer Alice in Wonderland. A a little bit over Peter Pan's flight. I think that's a subjective opinion. And I think objectively the Peter Pan's flight is more popular and it's a more unique experience. And like you said, the people have spoken, it always has a huge line. It's difficult to get into. Yeah, I, I think it's D territory, which means we've upgraded it since. Best value were coupon books. However, guests could purchase single tickets individually. An A ticket costs 10 cents, a B ticket 15 cents, a C ticket 25 cents, a D ticket 50 cents, and an E ticket was the most expensive at a whopping 85 cents. So Pinocchio's Daring Journey. Now Pinocchio's Daring Journey, I had to look twice for the rating and I couldn't find a coupon level. And then finally dawned on me, well, that's because it wasn't in the old fantasy land. And right. 1982 is when coupons went away. So since it was part of the new fantasy land of 1983, it never had a coupon. So let's give it a coupon. What would it be? My first reaction is to give it a C, but I have to say there's so much that happens in it. There's so many sets. There's a lot that's ambitious about it. The ride vehicle is 
just standard. So that doesn't help. And some of the story doesn't quite work. I don't enjoy it as much as Peter Pan, but it's really lengthy and it's really a solid attempt. So I guess it's stuck with a C, but I hate to do that to it. I don't like it enough to make it more than that. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I really want to love it. Um, and I'm really glad it's there. That's all I can say. So I give it one level lower than you. I give it a B. I feel mm -hmm. that compared to the other dark rides, it's the most boring of the dark rides that we have, in my opinion. I still like it. I do see quality in it, but yeah, I, I would give it a B. So I'm a I B. I can live with that. Yeah, I'm a B, you're a C. Okay, so let's take a look now at Sleeping Beauty's Castle Walkthrough, which back in the day was an A. What now? A B. Really? You upgraded it. Why did you upgrade it? Is that a better experience than Rocket Jets or Astro Orbiter? <laughs> okay. Yeah, Does it have more, than, than, it have more Disney ride. in it? It lasts longer. It has more Disney in it. Walking through is yet another example of a different way to go through the story. Uh -huh. And I don't think there, there aren't any other walkthroughs stories in Disneyland is there the treehouse the treehouse okay yeah although that's a, certainly a bigger scale it feels like an a but they went to such an effort to upgrade it well you know what the the, the downside is there's I'm gonna knock it down because they put so much effort into Q entertainment this is almost like a Q that has no attraction at the end of it <laughs> so so that's a little that's too bad because it's really good. I am always going to think of it in those terms. It's a queue with no attraction. <laughs> I mean, it should at least come out into a gift shop. It doesn't. Well, it almost does that. <laughs> well, maybe they should. Maybe they should end it with an attraction. Now. Like you come out the other end and something happens. You know, or or a meet and greet at least. Uh -huh. could, could they put a meet and greet at the end? I mean, it's. it's I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, but it's, all those things could uh, possibly could help it. But that you know, you're ranking the attraction as it is. I, and it's not a shooting gallery either. If it were a shooting gallery, maybe it would get a higher rating. I think I would actually rank this as a, I would make it a free attraction. Mm -hmm. It, I feel that, like you said, it's a queue without an attraction. And then the business That's side so of me. so rude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to be rude. To it, but the business yeah. side of me also thinks like, you know, they don't always have somebody manning it, you know, somebody at the entrance. And right. do they really need to pay somebody to collect tickets for it? You know, that makes me think like maybe it should just be a free for all. Um, but I, you know, I, I see the merits of it. It's certainly unique that you get to go in the castle. That's kind of exciting for a lot of a lot of people and a lot of kids yeah yeah. If you ran out of a certain level of ticket, you were always allowed to use a higher level ticket in its place. For example, if you wanted to board the Disneyland Railroad, which required a D ticket, ideally you would use a D ticket, but in a pinch, you could always use an E ticket since it was a higher level. Snow White's Enchanted Wish, which I had to... Uh, take a double look at even though i've been on it i've been on the new version i didn't realize what the new name was but obviously we're talking about the snow white dark ride in its current state back in the day it was a c but obviously it's a very different attraction from the old fantasy land one i think it's really entertaining really well executed and i was not i was skeptical about the new one but i'm very fond of it i think they did a great job of really letting you interact with the characters in it conveying a lot of great things about the film you, you definitely have a sense of going somewhere in this attraction so it's on par with uh, with the d ticket people i think it, i think it can get a d it's 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 somewhere between a c and a d because a, it's almost like dark rides automatically get a downgrade because they're not taken as seriously and that's not necessarily fair but as far as it being uh, I'm, I'm 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 torn between c and d for this in my opinion it's a c and the way i think about it is that i feel that pinocchio should be a lower coupon mm -hmm. and i feel like alice in wonderland and peter pan's flight should be a higher i feel like it's in the middle so i kind of feel like this is is you know c is the the middle level and uh that's where i feel like it fits in so did you for mr toad were you would be i don't remember if you said what you what you had ranked that one no i think i had that as a c if pinocchio is a b i think toad is a b okay. much as even though i love it personally i'm not so sure there's that much difference in the experiences okay uh what about storybook land canal boats back in the day it was a d coupon well if casey's a b then storybook lands a b equal yeah, opportunity same same area 
area, same basic experience for the most part, just a dangle on it. I think, you know, there's sort of the... It's very um, simple. Yeah, B. Yeah, me. yeah, I agree. It's very simple. Um, the fact that it's a boat ride kind of tempts me to go higher, but ultimately, at the end of the day, the show elements are extremely basic. So I, I agree. Okay, so let's go to Frontierland, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. E. Yeah. It's an E. I don't think there's anything to say about mm -hmm. that. I think we, everybody would probably agree. Mark Twain Steamboat, back in the day, was a D. What do you think it is now? I think it's a C. I totally agree. I feel like it's right in the middle. Pirate's Lair on Tom Sawyer's Island. So back in the day, of course, this was before it had the Pirate's Lair element. Uh, Tom Sawyer's Island was a D ticket attraction. What, uh, what should it be now? It feels more like it's a land with atmosphere than an actual attraction. I mean, you're not riding anything when you're in there so to me what you're actually paying for is the transportation to get over there on the raft so i'm putting that in the possibly free category it's it's just a land you know it's it's really fun to hang around in but right. it's kind of along the lines of, of toontown's assortment yeah huh. you know even though i really you know I, I'm, I'm super glad it's there but you know you don't have to charge for that yeah i i, I could go with free uh, either an a ticket or or free that may, both of those make sense to me the sailing ship columbia now we we just rated mark twain at a c what would you rate sailing ship columbia is that going to be the same or is that different it's i think it should be the same it's basically the same experience i agree it just has a slightly different theme it's still a yeah. fantastic uh ship but it's a mm -hmm. very similar experience. But it's a mm -hmm. very similar experience. One of the advantages of the ticket system was that if you were planning to visit Disneyland just to watch the entertainment, go shopping, or go dining without riding any attractions, you could buy an admission ticket to the park without having to pay for any of the attractions since the cost of the attractions was not built into the admission price. Under the current system, you pay for all the attractions, regardless of whether you ride Ride even one. What about the shooting gallery in Frontierland? Back in the day, it was a B coupon. What What do you think it merits now? Where was Buzz Lightyear? I think that we gave it a C. And you're already putting coins in for this, so I, I don't know if a ticket makes sense for it. But it oh, that's a really good point. You can just leave it as a coined attraction. It doesn't have to have a ticket. There's a dip if there's an attraction where you can experience the entire thing without putting the coin in. Uh huh. Because almost every attraction, you have to actually ride the attraction to experience the attraction. You can't just walk up, observe it, and you've seen the whole thing without doing it. Right. So, and this also, it's kind of hard to rank it up there with Buzz Lightyear, which, because there's really a lot more going on in Buzz Lightyear, and it's got our actual ride vehicle, which this doesn't have. So uh -huh. I guess a B, probably. Maybe even an A. Okay. As much as I like it, yeah. Yeah, I think probably an A for me. Critter Country. Critter Country. So it's no longer open, but just, but I, it indulged me. What would you do uh, i don't want to say tiana's bayou adventure because we haven't seen that yet so i don't think it's fair for us to rate something that we haven't seen but splash mountain where would you put that that's an e yeah i agree and i have no doubt that tiana's bayou adventure will also be an e uh, but of course you know we have to see it before we really know the mini adventures of winnie the pooh e um <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> No, that's not that. Um, I'd say a B. I'd put it on par with Pinocchio. Okay. The, we're talking about the Disneyland incarnation of it. I would give right. it a B. It's a soothing dark ride for children. That's it. It's a um, terrible not, attraction. It is. It is, but... You know, it's some terrible. people are like, oh, I mean, I, I've never heard of anyone coming off of it going, oh, that was great. Never yeah, heard let's of that. It again. Yeah. But I agree. It's, I actually it's, agree it's fascinating with because it, you can take an attraction that's so excellent and just by downgrading a few little things, you could let all the air out of its sails. So it's like they think that, well, you know, we we could just leave all the expensive parts out. It shows and it's and it, it we're not supposed to think about how it replaced something phenomenal, right? It's just right. it's just <laughs> it's <right. laughs> we will not consider the country bears, right? <laughs> I agree that it's a B. Like you said, other versions. The Disney World version, I think, is better than a B. And, of course, the Japanese version is way better. We well, definitely have the worst yeah. version. I can't give it a, more than a B. Although, I really can't give it an A because it is a dark ride. It is an actual solid experience. And Winnie the Pooh is a fantastic uh, character and set of characters. 
Okay. The rain room is lovely in there and some other effects that were taken from other versions, like where he comes out of his body and all those kinds of things. There's, there's, that's more than an A. Okay, Davy Crockett's Explorer Canoes. Back in the day, it was a D. What should it be now? I would give it a, probably an A. I think it's great though. I think it's a, a really nice experience. It's transportation and it's a, it's a good and an interesting experience, but well, I think we, maybe, a, maybe a B. I actually was thinking more on the level of C because I don't view it as transportation because it's like, un unlike say the monorail, the monorail drops you off somewhere, you know, it's taking you somewhere. This is round yeah. trip. And I think it's really cool to go back there and being raised in an area that is very much a concrete jungle. Mm -hmm. I feel that it's a, at least for people that were kids like me, it is a fairly unique experience. I don't get to paddle a canoe out in nature very much. So I was going to give it a C, but I, I totally get your points. Well, actually, I could give it some upgrades on that, because for one thing, if you ever wanted to go canoeing or something like that, you'd be it'd be quite expensive and a lot of work to get there to do it. And here you're in the middle of your Disneyland day, and all of a sudden you're in the frontier in a canoe with like, boom, you're there. And it is quite an experience being close to the water. Yeah, and it's, and it's again, it's a different kind of transportation. I can bump it up to a C. I could live with that. I kind of understand how it used to be a D, because prior to Galaxy's Edge, I feel like the the back of Rivers of America was more immersive, you know, um, mm -hmm. bigger trees, bigger. Ex uh, I felt more like I was just like lost in the woods and a million miles away from Anaheim. I still think that it looks great. And, you know, you have to do what you have to do in order to accommodate a new land. So I totally get it. But it's not as good of an experience as it used to be. But it's still quite a good experience. About six miles away from Disneyland, neighboring theme park Knott's Berry Farm used to have a coupon system as well. But unlike Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm did not have an e-ticket. Their system only had A through D coupons, with A coupons being for the best attractions and D tickets for the simplest. Exactly the opposite of Disneyland system. Okay, so our last land, Main Street. Disneyland story presenting great moments with Mr. Lincoln. So back in the day, it was free. Mm -hmm. What would you put it now? I like the concept of being free and not to have it, not to reflect on the quality of the show at all. Given the patriotic nature of it, I, I like the idea of it being free. Yeah, um, I do too. I like it encourages pe more people to see it. You know, it's it's educational. Like you said, it's patriotic, it's educational. We want as many people to see it as possible. I think it should still be free as well. Let's subsidize it, yeah. Main Street Cinema. Back in the day, it was a A coupon. But keep in mind that the attraction used to be a little bit different. It used to be black and white silent films from the silent film era. Is it still an A? Or where would you put it? Well, what's pushing me in the A direction is I like the idea that Main Street is a time period when things cost, you know, a penny or 10 cents or whatever it was so the idea that it's a lower price just because you're in a themed land from an earlier time yeah yeah although you could say that about Frontierland also if you wanted right. to do that I think I'd have to stick with an A for I like the idea of you giving some kind of a ticket to go into the movie theater because that's cute and <laughs> it's a it's an A because any one of those things you wanted to see you could pull up on your phone at any time probably yeah so it's nice but it's an A I, I was, like it I was tempted to rate it as free but after hearing your comment about it's cute to have somebody actually taking tickets that makes makes it feel more like it's an actual movie theater. So yeah, let's let's keep it an A so that that's still part of the experience. Okay, Main Street Vehicles. Back in the day, they um, were an A. It's, I think it's free. Yeah. I would tend to say free. It's transportation and it, it's just too much of a hassle for it, it seems to me, to try to collect anything. Yeah, it seems like it's, it's, just, tra it's just transportation. It adds to the atmosphere, but the experience itself is no big deal. Okay. If they had a, a Main Street vehicle that had a little something extra to it or if it catered to just one person like if you had a personal vehicle that would take you somewhere or something like that then they could charge for that yeah <laughs> A little Disneyland uh, Uber or Lyft. Uber. They can take you to a different part of the world. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so our last attraction, Disneyland Railroad. Back in the day, it was a D. What do you think it should be now? Hmm, that is interesting. You know, it's a kind of an important part of the park, and it's kind of an overview, like a like a guided tour of the park. And I think we should honor it. I guess a C. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. A C. And you definitely see some things when you're on the railroad. I think it's a great experience. Okay, so I'm just going to ask you one last question. We've ranked all of them, so a final question for us to mm -hmm. to discuss. What's your opinion of the coupon system? You know, we no longer have it at Disneyland. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Well, it's turned into reservation systems and other other ways of, of divvying those things up. I like the idea that when you're in Disneyland, it's just kind of you just sort of let it unfold however it unfolds yeah so i think not having it be ticketed attractions and just rolling it into the price of the park is good should someone pay less because all they want to do is go in and soak up the atmosphere and not actually go on the attractions like in a sense you're, you're paying for going on everything even though you don't right it would really just depend on how much the cost of a ticket is yeah if, if it, an e-coupon starts coming out to well like now we have single day passes on attractions at 15 and 20 dollars a pop if that's what all of the e-tickets are going to be it's almost a different discussion right i remember in 1982 when they got rid of it and i was ecstatic i was mm -hmm. so happy to get rid of it good riddance <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. of course i'm nostalgic for it because it's old disneyland and brings back happy memories but i i can't forget that how happy i was to be able to go on any attraction i wanted and not be bogged down by that system so i actually like the idea that it's no longer here but you know you bring up an interesting point it's like with genie plus and stuff like that in a way we kind of have it it's just it's evolved and it's changed and in a way it's kind of back but i mean but in a way it's very very different too well it depends what you mean by payment too because before we started having fast pass and that kind of thing the more popular an attraction was the longer you waited and your willingness to wait is your form of payment so you're in essence you're paying more for a more popular attraction by being by waiting more you're being paid for your time right so now what you're paying for is avoiding waiting for it you know <laughs> yeah, um, which actually it kind of is the same thing <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you so much. This was a whole lot of fun and we definitely agreed on a whole lot, uh, but it was really interesting to see which ones we didn't. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, now, yeah. now we have to go. We have yeah, to now go, we go to Disneyland. And, uh, from in the park, we'll see if we still feel that way. So exactly. <laughs> I love that. Let's do that. Okay. Great. Take care. All right. Thank you.